Example 158 tech, cardiac stents are used to open a closed artery in order to reduce the risk of a heart attack in at-risk patients. Medical researchers are interested in determining if the length of time spent in the hospital after a patient undergoes the implantation of a cardiac stent is affected by the patient's view from the hospital bed. The researchers randomly assigned 90 cardiac stent patients to one of three different types of hospital rooms for their recovery. A room with a view of nature, trees, grass, and open sky a room with pictures of nature on the walls but no window view, or a room without a view and without images of nature on the walls. To block out the effect of different surgeons, the researchers used patients from three different surgeons. The response variable of interest for the study was the length of hospital stay. Complete the ANOVA table below and use the results to answer the following questions. Okay, so let's take a look at the ANOVA table below and see what that looks like. All right, here is our ANOVA table. We have the dependent variable being the length of stay in the hospital, in other words, and they give us the sum of squares for both the room variable, the surgeon variable, but we're missing the error sum of squares, but we do have the total sum of squares here. So the total sum of squares is actually going to be found by adding up these three sum of squares. So if we added the room sum of squares to the surgeon sum of squares to the error sum of squares, we would get the corrected total. So in other words, if we take the corrected total and we subtract away these two values here, 29.042 and 1.40, we should get the error sum of squares that we are missing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that in our calculator and see what it comes up with. So we will have 48. 0.496, that's our total sum of squares. And we're going to subtract away the other two sum of squares. So 29.042 minus 1.4. And when we do that, we get the answer 18.054. Okay, so that's our error sum of squares. Now we need to fill in the degrees of freedom. Well, in the problem, they describe the types of rooms that we were dealing with, right? We had, we had a room with a view, right? Rooms with a view. We had rooms with pictures on the wall of nature, and we had rooms with no pictures on the wall and no view. So that's three kinds of different rooms. They also tell us that they have different surgeons, and they say that we had exactly three different surgeons. So we have three treatments and three blocks, essentially. That means when we fill in these degrees of freedom, it's just three minus one for each, right? Because there are three rooms, it'll be degrees of freedom two for the rooms. And because there are three different surgeons, it'll be degrees of freedom two for the surgeons. They tell us the error degrees of freedom is 85. That means the total degrees of freedom is 85 plus two plus two, or in other words, 85 plus four, so 89. Okay, from here we can get the mean square for treatment and the mean square for blocks, or in other words, the mean square for the room variable. And that's simply by dividing this degrees of freedom into the sum of squares, right? And that will give us the mean square. Okay, so let's see what that will be going to be approximately 15, right? Because we're doing half of 29. So it'll be like 14 and a half. So let's see, it'll be 29.042 divided by 2. And we get the answer 14.521. And likewise, we're going to divide 2 into our 1.4, which should give us 0.7. All right, next we're going to divide the error sum of squares by its degrees of freedom. So it'll be 18.054 divided by 85, and that'll end up giving us 0 0.2124. All right, the next thing we're going to do is determine our F-test stats for both the treatment and the blocks. So remember, the formula is basically this. It's MST divided by MSE that's going to give you your F-test stat for treatments. And if you want to do the one for blocks, it's MSB divided by MSE. So all we have to do is divide this MSE into both of these. So first into the blocks and then into the treatments or vice versa. It doesn't matter, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's work from the top down, actually. So we're going to do the MST divided by MSE first. So we'll have 14.521 divided by that MSE of 0.2124. And you get 68.366. So 68.366. And we'll do the same now for the F test stat for blocks. We'll just put MSE into MSB. So I have 0.7 divided by 0.2124. And we get approximately 3.296. Okay, so there are your two test stats, and they've given us the corresponding significance levels, right? So we can see that this is highly significant, right? That p-value is very small, so it means that there is a treatment effect, it seems. 
And this value, while not highly significant, is certainly less than 5%, so it depends, of course, at what significance level we're running our test at. But you can certainly see that at 5%, it would be significant. All right, let's scroll down and take a look at what else they've given us here. They've also given us a set of multiple comparisons, right? So what this means is that they actually compared the separate means to one another. Since we had a small p-value for treatments, it means that the treatment effect is significant, and that means there's a difference between the different treatment means, right? We don't know which means differ from each other, though, unless we perform a multiple comparison procedure like the one they've done here using SPSS. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Let's go down and try to fill in the answers to our questions, right? Okay, so they've given us a lot of questions here. It says, which variable represents the treatments in this experiment? So it would have been the rooms, right? The rooms are the treatments in this case. You know, they cared about how people recovered in the different rooms. They didn't really care about the surgeons. If you remember, the problem actually stated that they were blocking out the surgeons, right? So let's go take a look at that so we can see that they said that. So let's take a look at that so we can see that that's what they said here. Notice how they said here, to block out the effect of different surgeons, the researchers used patients from three different surgeons. So we know the surgeons are the blocks. Which variable represents the blocks then? So again, as we just mentioned, it's the surgeons, right? All right, then they ask us in part C, what is the null hypothesis for a test of the treatment effects? So the null hypothesis is simply that the mean for the rooms with no view is equal to the mean for the rooms with a picture view is equal to the mean for the rooms with an actual view. All right, then they ask us, what's the p-value for the test of the treatment effect? If you remember, that p-value was very small. It was 0 0.000. Let's take a look at it again. So we're talking about this p-value here, which is highly significant. And again, it's highly significant because it's very small. All right, so part E, it says, what is the decision regarding the null hypothesis for the test of the treatment effect? Well, remember, if the p-value is smaller than our alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. Even though they didn't give us a significance level, we can assume that our p-value is smaller than any significant level we'd actually use, right? Because the p-value is essentially zero, so or pretty close to zero. So basically, we're going to say that we reject the null, right? So our conclusion would be to reject HO in this case. So we're rejecting the null hypothesis here because, again, the p-value is less than alpha. All right, let's look at part F then. It says, based on the results of this experiment, do people in these different room types all have the same average length of hospital stay? So remember, the null hypothesis up here said that they're all the same, right? The mean hospital stay for each of the three types of rooms is the same, but we just rejected that in the step E here, right? So if we rejected the null hypothesis that says they're all the same, then basically it says, based on the results of this experiment, do the people in these room types all have the same average length of stay in the hospital? We would say, no, the stays seem to be different, right? or the stays are not all the same. So they're not all equal or they're not all the same. All right, let's look at part G then. It says at a 5% significance level, is the length of hospital stay affected by the choice of surgeon? We talked about this very briefly when we're looking at the ANOVA table. Let's take one more look at that p-value again. All right, so we're talking about the p-value here for surgeon, and they're telling us that at a 5% significance level, so if alpha is equal to 5%, do we conclude that surgeons affect the length of hospital stay? Well, we would have to say here that the answer is yes to that, right? Because the p-value here, which is only, so our p-value, let's write that out here. Our p-value is only 0.042, or about 4.2%. So it's a little bit less than alpha. Remember, whenever your p-value is smaller than alpha, you should reject the null hypothesis in question. Now, in this particular case, 4% is not miles away from 5%, right? It's pretty close, so it's kind of like a marginal case, but it's still less than 5%, so we'd still say that we should reject the null hypothesis, and we do conclude that surgeons seem to have some impact on the length of stay in the hospital. Because remember, the hypothesis there would be the same thing. It would basically be like the mean for the first surgeon is equal to the mean for the second surgeon is equal to the mean for the third surgeon. And what we're saying here is that these means represent the average length of stay in the hospital when patients undergo surgery from these three surgeons, right? So the first mean represents the average length of stay for patients who had surgeon one, this one represents the average length of stay for surgeon two, et cetera, right? And because we can reject the hypothesis that they're all equal, we're basically saying that this is not true, that the means are not all equal to one another. And so the surgeon does seem to matter. Although it's not as highly significant, it seems, 
as that room variable, which ended up seeming to have a stronger effect. But we also want to bear in mind that this test was not really done to compare surgeons, right? We tried to block out the effect of the surgeon. So if they wanted to really compare surgeons, they would get a good random mix of surgeons, and then, you know, it might be that there is a significant difference between the very best surgeons and maybe the worst surgeons. But in this problem, perhaps they actually tried to even, you know, get surgeons that were kind of, of comparable abilities. And maybe that's why there's not such a huge difference between the hospital length of stays for the different surgeons. Although, again, it's still a significant difference because that p-value is smaller than 5%. Okay, so again, the answer for part G is that, of course, all right, so the answer here is yes, surgeons do have some effect on the length of stay. All right, let's look at part H then. It says, use the results of the multiple comparison procedure included with the SPSS output to construct a diagram that ranks the means for our different room types from small to large. Okay, so we talked about this comparison already. Let's go ahead and create this diagram they're talking about, right? So we have to list the three means. And here our three means will basically be N, P, and V, right? And we want to rank them in size order. So let's start by the individual comparisons. Let's first talk about the comparison of N and P. Well, based on this comparison here, as we spoke about, the interval here is entirely positive. If the interval is entirely positive, it means the first mean in the interval was larger than the second mean. So I'm going to put a greater than symbol here between the N and the P. This indicates that the length of stay for people in a room with no view and no pictures is greater than the length of stay for people with pictures. In other words, it indicates here that perhaps having pictures on the wall helps people to recover faster because they're looking at nature or trees or whatever in the photographs. And the difference here is, again, somewhere between these two values. So if you want to know how significant that difference is in terms of time, well, you know, it looks like it's about you know, somewhere between 0.9 of a day or about a day, let's say, if you round it up to about a day and a half or so. That's about the difference in the length of stay. It may not seem like a large difference to you, but of course, to an insurance company, that would be a very big difference. And then of course, to hospitals who need beds, that would be certainly a big difference. And then if you're a person sitting in a hospital and you hate being in a hospital, especially if you're in a room that doesn't have any view and doesn't have any photos or pictures on the wall, it certainly could be significant to you if you could get out early by almost a day, right? Okay, let's look at the next comparison. Next comparison is between N and V, so that's rooms without a view and rooms with an actual view, a window, out into the parking lot or into nature, you know. And for that one, again, the interval is entirely positive, indicating again that the first mean is larger than the second one. And again, we have a similar size difference, right, about between, you know, somewhere between a day and a day and a half worth of a stay longer if you're in a room without a view. All right, the next comparison is going to be P to V, so rooms with pictures of nature on the wall versus a room that actually has a view of nature, right? So pictures of nature versus a room with a view of nature. And when you look at this one, it goes from negative to positive. So we're going to have to conclude that there's a possibility these two means are equal to one another. And the other thing we want to notice here is that it's just a tiny bit more positive, the interval, right? Just a tiny bit more positive. So what do I mean by a tiny bit more positive? Well, you know, 0.29 is bigger than 0.27 in absolute value. So there are more numbers, slightly more numbers on the positive side of the number line. That means, if you think about it from the perspective of if it was all positive, it would mean that the first mean was larger than the second, right? But it's not all positive, so because it goes into the negative territory, we're going to have to include the equal sign here. So what it means is rooms with a picture on the wall had a larger sample mean stay, but not a significantly larger sample mean. So in other words, the sample means weren't different enough that we could conclude there's a true difference in the population means. Okay, but either way, that's our three comparisons. Now from here, we want to create the diagram. So the diagram will basically be in order, right? It looks like the room with a view was the smallest. Then it goes the room with pictures, and then it goes the room with no pictures on the wall. So from small to large. But we're going to draw a bar on top of V and P because those two were not considered to be significantly different. We had an equal to sign attached to those. So we're going to put that on top to say, the V and P rooms are not significantly different. The worst room is the one without a view, right? That had the longest hospital stay. Okay, so our diagram here for part H would be VPN with a bar above VP. Okay, and the last little piece of this then is to summarize your conclusions from this ANOVA randomized block design experiment. Be sure to state which means are significantly different from each other, if any. Okay, so basically we saw that both rooms and surgeons are significant, right? So we'll say room type 
and surgeons, right, affect hospital stay, right, lengths, right? So they affect the amount of time that you stay in the hospital. And the longest stays occurred in rooms without a view, with no view. There was not a difference, there was not a significant difference between rooms with pictures and rooms with the actual view. All right, so basically the summary here is that the room type and surgeons affect hospital stay lengths and the longest stays occurred in rooms with no view, right? But there was not a significant difference between rooms with pictures on the wall and rooms with an actual view. So basically, if hospitals wanted to use this information, they could say to themselves, well, we don't actually need to worry about redesigning an entire hospital building to make sure every room has an actual view. We could actually put up pictures on the walls for the rooms that are interior and don't have views. We can make the rooms appear to have views by putting photos of nature and pictures of nature on the wall, and that seems to affect positively the hospital stay lengths. So people tend to recover faster if they're in rooms with either a view or photos of a view.